Hey everybody, Derek Pierce here, and in today's video, we are diving into Surfer SEO. Surfer SEO is a web-based software that will give you the ability to have really x-ray vision for your SEO campaigns, telling you exactly step-by-step -step what to do to rank number one in Google. First and foremost, if you're new here to the channel, be sure to subscribe as I release new digital marketing videos every single week. We'd love to see you here. Also, if you like this video, give it a like, give it a share, and drop a line in the comments below if you got questions about the software or if you would like to see something in future videos. So with that being said, let's go ahead and let's dive into the dashboard. So we're inside my Surfer SEO dashboard, and I may end up doing several different videos covering all the different features and all the different tools because there's a lot to go over. For this video, I wanted to do an overall review and provide you with the two key components that we use in Surfer on a daily basis and how they work together. So first and foremost, let's talk about all the different features that come with Surfer. You've got the content editor. This allows you to go out and know what to put on your pieces of content. A lot of times what we'll do is we'll wonder and we question, okay, what should I include? I know I wanna target this keyword, but what all should I cover for that piece of content? This answers all of those questions because what it's doing is it's analyzing the top 10 and telling you how many words to put on the page, what to include on the page, and I'll show you that in detail here in just a moment. Second is the audit tool. These are the two tools that we use more than anything else. So we start off with a content editor. The audit tool is after we get the page published and we want to analyze it versus the top 10 to see how we stack up. So what we're doing is we're creating the content, then we're publishing the pages, and then we're running the audit tool to see where the modifications we need to make. Also, the audit tool is something that you can help track with Google Updates. So you know once a Google Update happens, typically there's these shifts that go on, and it allows you to get a 30,000 foot view of the modifications that you need to make after a Google Update. Then you've got the Content Planner. This is allowing you to see relevancy with your content. So you can plug in a keyword, and this tells you all the different topics that you can cover that are relevant to that particular topic so that way you can pick and plan your content moving forward. The SERP analyzer allows you to see how competitive the top 10 or the top 20 of your keywords are so that way you have an idea and have a gauge of how many word how much the word count is, how authoritative the domains are, and you just have a better idea of how competitive that niche is. And then keyword research is pretty self-explanatory. You plug in your keyword that you want to go after and this spits out a ton of different keywords that you have the ability to target. So let's start first with the content editor, seeing, seeing as that is where we really start from. So I'm gonna click right here on content editor and you can see our previous content editor history and we could click on these at any given time and this will load up uh, the content editor. And you can see this is just a regular what you see is what you get type editor with you know, the ability to add header tags, you can add images and as well. And I'll show you all that here in just a moment, but let's plug in a keyword here for our content editor in this example. So let's say, for example, we wanted to do a, uh, we wanted to do a review on ClickBank. Okay, ClickBank is a popular affiliate marketing site where you can promote, you can sell your own stuff. So we're just gonna do ClickBank review as the keyword that we want to target. I'm gonna click to create content editor, and this is gonna go out and this is going to run for this particular keyword. And this is then going to tell us what all we need to include on that particular page. So this takes us just a couple of seconds here, and then we're able to then go to the editor and then make changes from there and add our content from there. Now, what I like to do before I touch on this and before we look at anything is I like to answer as many questions as we can about a particular topic because the more in-depth your, your content is, unless you're going after something that is not that competitive or unless it's something that doesn't warrant a ton of content, I like to include as much in-depth content as I possibly can. and answering all the, the major questions. As you're gonna see here, Surfer is gonna give you these questions and it's gonna give you a good outline to go after. So again, it takes us just a couple of seconds here and this is going to be, you're gonna be well on your way to creating a good high quality piece of content. So what we're gonna do now is that this is done. You see the check mark, we're gonna click on this and this is going to open up the editor that you saw previously. You can see right here, ClickBank review is the uh, heading and just by having 
this plugged in here and having this editor, we can see that on the right hand side, there's a content score. Now, before we dig into this, I want to caution you about the content score. You see content scores with stuff like Yoast, you see it on Rank Math, you see it on Surfer SEO, you see all of these different, get these different scores and people will be so caught up into the score that they waste a lot of time and they end up not publishing the content because they feel like it's not good enough. Look, here's the thing. Ignore these scores outside of just using them as a gauge. So for us, we like to try to get these. If we can get them to the green part, then that's good enough for us. We don't strive to reach 100. We've never reached 100. Probably our best piece of content is like an 80 or 85. You don't have to get this to a 100 score. So I just want to let you know that this is just a gauge because what this is doing is this is analyzing the top 10 to see the word count and to see what all words need to be included so what i want to you know really caution you against is some of these some of these sites are very lengthy and they have user generated content so like if somebody plugs in you know allows allows other people to comment on the actual post so you may see that person has got six or seven thousand words of content but the reason why they've got that much is because they may have 200 comments on that particular blog post so I just want to caution you against that not to put everything not to put all the stock inside of this score right here get it to where it's good enough and move forward and then start focusing on the other aspects of your SEO. So what we're going to do here, before we dig into anything else, I like to do my title and I, I would clean this title up. I would have my, my main keyword in here, but then I would do something like this. Does it really work in 2022? Okay, so I do that. That would be my main title. And this is going to be, this would be what your blog post title would be. And then I come in here and I add an introduction. Okay. And so this introduction is like, hey, uh, have you been thinking about ClickBank? Maybe you've wondered if you could, you know, make, make money online by selling on ClickBank. Or maybe you thought about making money from affiliate marketing on ClickBank. This guide will show you everything that you need to do to get started and to be successful with ClickBank. And that's your introduction. The next thing that you want to go into right off the bat is an start answering some of these questions. And what I like to do is I like to look at this as content chunks. So this is your headline. This is your H1 tag. Then you've got your introduction. And now is your first chunk. So the way that we get these content chunks is I go over here to its outline. And you will see in this outline builder, you can see titles, headings, and questions. So we're going to click on headings. And you can see that Surfer spits out a lot of different uh, potential headings that are common with the top 10. So you can see right here, ClickBank reviews, frequently asked questions. Then you've got ClickBank review conclusion. And then you've got how to make money with ClickBank, discovering gym programs and sidestepping rubbles. How is ClickBank different from Affluencer? Is ClickBank a scam? What is ClickBank? Okay, so I'm gonna use this, what is ClickBank? And this is uh, artificial intelligence being written for you using Surfer's AI tool. Now, we've done reviews in the past using Jarvis, and Jarvis works really well in conjunction with Surfer. As a matter of fact, I'll do a separate video on that. But Surfer, uh, Surfer SEO has their own built-in AI with these headings, so you can use some of these and then sort of use them as a, as a guide to maybe that you want to reframe a little bit. So... If I wanted to just copy the headline, I could just click H2, that's copied, and it's pasted over here inside the article there. Now, if I wanted to copy the whole section, I could just click this right here, and it pastes that automatically. So what is ClickBank? ClickBank is a digital content platform where digital products are available and specializes in products created and promoted by online entrepreneurs, okay? So that's a good start. You may want to clean this up. You may want to rephrase that, whatnot, but this gives you a good idea. And if you look at it, I always like to try to answer the questions, who, what, when, where, how, why, and what to do next, as much as I possibly can. Now, in not every scenario are you gonna be able to include it exactly that way, but that's what I like to aim for whenever I'm creating a piece of content. So again, we've got ClickBank Review as our H1, we got a small introduction, maybe a paragraph to two, then we're right off the bat with what is ClickBank. The next one would be, 
probably who, who would benefit from using ClickBank or something along those lines, or how can you get started with ClickBank? And the way that I'm doing this is I'm looking over here on the headings to see what I need to integrate in with that who, what, when, where, how, and why. So that's how this works. So let's just keep going down here and let me see here. What are the payment methods available through ClickBank? How does ClickBank work? ClickBank work. Finding affiliate programs on ClickBank. That would be a good section. So we're going to copy that, plug that in there. And I would do another one. Um, how do I get started on ClickBank? I'm going to highlight that and I'm going to wrap this into an H2 tag. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to give all the details on how to get started. Okay. Now, just based on what we've done here, let's let's go back. If we scroll back up here and we look at our guidelines, you can see our content score has already went up to a 22. And you can see the highlighted words, suggested words is 4000 to or 3975 to 4572. Now, again, this is just a gauge. I don't think this is really necessary to have 4000 words on ClickBank. However, with that being said, because of some sites having user generated content, like if somebody has their blog comments opened, then what they're able to do is they're able to that that's actually registering within Google. And that's how this is being crawled. OK, so that's how that works. This right here tells you the exact keywords that are that should be included in your topic. So you can see right here, this gives you a gauge on how many times the, the terms are used. So in this case, ClickBank Marketplace, you see this is used zero times and this is suggesting this is being used as three to 11. So what I could do is I can come down here and I can have a section called understanding the ClickBank Marketplace. And then I can go the ClickBank Marketplace allows you to search for affiliate marketing products, yada, 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 right? <laughs> so I put this in a H2 here. And by doing that, you see, I put ClickBank Marketplace here, ClickBank Marketplace here, and take a look at this. So this is highlighted now that we've used this two times. Remember when I did that before, it only was, it said zero. And now once I click over this or I highlight over this, this tells me where these terms are being used at. Okay. So you may end up getting in a situation where you have already got a piece of content created and you put it into the editor here, then it actually tells you to take terms away. We've had that happen before. So again, this is just a gauge for you to go by and it makes your content writing so much simpler of wondering how to structure your content on the page and how to create the content that is going to get you found in the uh, search engines. No longer do you have to wonder and worry about, okay, what should I include on the page? How do I need to frame it? What do, what do my headings need to be? And that sort of thing. So you remember, we go right here to the outline. You've, uh, we looked at the headings. The other thing that you've got here are the questions, okay? So we go down here to the questions, we click on this, you can see, can ClickBank make you a mil millionaire? Is ClickBank legit 2021? Why is ClickBank bad? Is ClickBank.com legit? So these are common questions that people are asking. So you put these into an FAQ, or you could put them as their own H2 tag, and you can answer these questions, and that's going to help you bump up the, uh, the content as well. So in order to do that, you can just come in here and can ClickBank make you a millionaire. We can just copy that H2 and it's plugged in there as well. Then you can say, is ClickBank legit? Copy that as an H2 and you can see that's there as well. And then also we had on the heading, one of the things that we had was our final conclusion. And we put that in an H2 as well. All right, so this is how we are able to come up with content, know what to include on the page. And again, use these guidelines as just that, as a guideline. Don't think that you have to be married 
to I've got to get 4,000 words. Just make it remotely comparable to what the top 10 is. Now, in the next portion, once we get this created and we get this published, we're going to take this to WordPress. We're going to upload it to our website with images and videos and anything else that we that we have on that particular page that we want to include. For me personally, I like to include images that are screenshots with a uh, with a watermark on it, so that way other people can't you know grab the images, so to speak. You can you can see this in all the reviews that I did on think Ta at thinktanklab.com. You'll see there's a screen uh, a watermark over all the screenshots that I've got, and then you can also add videos in there. This is only going to enhance your pages. So once you get the pages all dialed in, what you, and get them published, what you can do is you can come in here to the audit tool. So this audit tool allows you to enter your keyword, then you enter the URL of the page that you would like to audit. So I've already done that for the sake of time, so that way you're not having to watch this thing just hourglass. Doesn't take this thing long, but I just didn't want you to have to sit here and wait on me. So you can see right here, I did one for Thrivecart Review. So I'm gonna click on this because I published a Thrivecart Review page. You can see this right here. And there are the, uh, there's this, the, the screen captures that I did with the uh, watermark included and you can see how that looks and this is a pretty lengthy in-depth piece of content and uh, one of the things that I included was you know my personal experience with this particular product which I highly recommend that you do that if at all possible if you've got you know where you've got a personal experience and you've, you actually use the product then that's only going to help you sell more of the product so you can see right here right off the bat this is our audit and i'm going to click refresh because once you make updates to that particular page you can come in here and refresh it and this will give you a new you know everything that's new and fresh based off of what the modifications that you were uh that you made so you can see our content score is 67 exactly what i was saying before you know i'm not 100 percent married to that particular number of what has to be done uh this was i felt like pretty good uh, good enough basically. So we're gonna click on show details on the content score and you can see where they have uh, where they have graded mine versus the other competition. So you can see we're number 31 right now for this particular term. And this has been, uh, I would say about two or three weeks since we made the modifications inside Surfer that, uh, that this popped to number 31. Before that, it wasn't there, it was nowhere to be found. We had the page up, but it was just the page with an introductory, and I had actually created this to, to start this back in early 2000, and I look back and I thought, like, oh my God, I, I can't believe I didn't, I didn't finish the damn post. And it's just one of those things, it got sidetracked, and it's like, what the hell are you gonna do? So I ended up going back and adding more content to it, and now we have got our score at a 67, and it's already moved from nowhere to number 31 here, and that's been over the last couple of weeks. So this gives you an idea of where the content score is. Now, this is something that I want you to pay special close attention to, and that is your competitors on this audit tool. So you click on this right here, this allows you to take out sites that are not really your competition. So in other words, like if you were competing against the the main site let's say the main site was a very authoritative site and it had been around for a while and you were competing against the main sales page of that particular brand the likelihood that you are going to overtake it is probably small so what you can do is you can take that one out of your competition so let's say for example we wanted to uh, just remove that then we could just click this right here to either include or exclude this competition. So we've got this one hour professor here is included. I'm gonna include this one right here, this Larry Ludwig. I have no relation to any of these uh, sites, so I have no idea who they are. Uh, this one right here is a competition. This is a competition. This would be a competition. But some of these are very authoritative sites, and you can see how many, wor how many words they've got included on their particular pages. So this one right here, this would be a competition. This one would be a competition. And this one would be a competition, okay? So roughly 3,000 to 6,000 words in content. So we're just gonna click Let's Go. 
and this is then going to we're going to refresh this and we're going to see if this shows any difference because what you can have happen is you can have one competitor that just blows the the hell out of the content and just creates just this just creates a damn book on on the particular content and it throws your averages out of out, out of the picture so that's kind of why you want to click on this to select your comp competitors so you can see there's a couple here that have uh that have lower than what we have but they're still ranking higher than what we are so chances are they probably got some links and some off-page stuff that's going on that we have not done on this particular page yet Right here, missing common backlinks. So you can click right here to show missing backlinks. You can see we don't have a link here from Medium. I actually got banned by Medium because I was using a automated tool to post to Medium and it ended up going crazy one time and it banned me from Medium. So if you're using Medium to rank, be super, super careful because they're very tricky and they will ban your account uh, with that, without, without second thought, okay? So this gives you the missing backlinks of what the top 10 have, and that way you can go out and recreate those backlinks. Internal linking, this tells you which internal links that you can get links from. So you can see right here, these are a couple of sites that we've got, or a couple of links that are internal that we are pointed to this particular page. And then the terms to use, this gives you a good idea of what to include in your particular page. So you can see right here, shopping cart is, is uh, suggested nine to 19 times. So you can see we've got nine times that we've used that. Now, in the event that we don't have enough, like this right here, a Thrive Cart offers, saying add one to three, let's say I don't know what that term is. I can click right here and see examples of how other people have used this in their content and then go from there, okay? So this is how we do this. We, we, eventually, we essentially create the content, we publish the page, and then we come in and we run the audit tool and we see where the modifications are. So you can see we've got 2,500 words in the body. It's suggesting that we add another 1,700 words in the body. We can click show details and you can see where our site stacks up. So you can see number one is 5,670. And then you've got this one right here, 6,400. Both of these sites um, have got a massive amount of content. So if we scroll them down, I'm just curious if they've got um, blog comments. So you can see right here, they've got their blog comments that are open. So when you have these blog comments, this a lot of times will bump up the, uh, the number of words. And for whatever reason, this just does not look like 6,400 words. Uh, let's go to this one right here. Maybe their blog comments or some of them are being hidden. Maybe there's like several pages of blog comments. I don't know. But um, so this one, this is the one that has 5,600. And you get an idea of how, how much, look at that, look how much content that is. And I'm just curious if they've got blog comments open and user generated content. It doesn't look that way from the from this vantage point, but they've got a, a pretty lengthy article that uh, that answers all these questions. So that gives you an idea of what you are up against in the top ten and really how to format your content so that way moving forward you know what your stuff is missing. So in closing, I highly recommend Surfer because this literally gives you x-ray vision for your SEO campaigns and allows you to make the modifications that you need to make once updates happen or once you publish your piece of content and you want to make modifications so that way you can outdo your competitors. Now, if you order through my link that you will find inside the description below this video, I'm going to include a special bonus to help you with your SEO rankings. It's valued at $299. All you gotta do is just click on the link, order through that, and once you do, just forward me your receipt. I will include all the details inside the description on exactly what to do to get your bonus. 
Also, I put a link to my Think Tank Lab site that has the full review with all the layouts of the screenshots of all the different features that come with Surfer. Only clued it two of the features. These are the ones that we primarily use on a daily basis. But again, you will find all those links inside the description. Again, thanks for watching the video. Be sure to give this a like, give it a share as that helps me get found in the algorithm. And I will see you in the next video real, real soon.